Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, so, we are doing another round of Nerd Showcase. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope if you're anywhere uh, near where there's snowfall today, because in Maine there is, I hope you guys are staying safe. So, I hope you guys are enjoying your Tuesday. I know I am sufficiently enjoying my Tuesday off. However, um, I am just getting started and I haven't even really had anything to eat yet. So I'm getting my videos and my other stuff going, guys, before I even eat food. So feel privileged. No, I'm just kidding, guys. Um, I mean, I, I have not had lunch yet, but uh, don't feel overly privileged that I'm doing videos before I eat, guys. It's just my standard MO after waking up very late today. Um, so guys, here is the newest part of the Nerd Showcase. You guys have seen that we've been doing a lot having to do with these figures. Not this, uh, type of figure, but the fact that it's part of the Transformers, the movie. And now that you guys have seen the whole shot, I'm actually going to move in close. I just wanted to make sure you guys could see the whole thing at first. So this guy's is part of the studio series. This is one of their smaller little figures, guys. Um... The Studio Series is what's been bringing us all the stuff that has been mostly based around the movies. Now, they do bring out other stuff. Well, actually, no. And now that I think about it, guys, Studio Series almost exclusively stays to the movies. Now, there's two kind of movies they stay to, though. There's the Bumblebee movie. So, they they do figures based on the Bumblebee movie that came out a couple of years ago. And then there's the movie that came out back in, what was it, the late 80s, I think it was? 80s, 90s, whenever the Transformers movie came out. I want to say, since they call a lot of times um, Studio Series 86, I want to say that's when it came out was... Um, 86 but i remember going to the theater to watch transformers the movie and 86 i would have only been seven so i'm not so sure i it was came out in 86 as it is because now i will not be able to sleep well at night without knowing um i have to know so uh bear with me for a quick second in the meantime guys um I can tell you that this figure ran me about $9.97. No, excuse me. I think it might have actually run me $10.97 at the local Walmart. So the price of these figures, guys, anything coming out of... See, it says um, up there, guys, it says Takara, Tomy. Um, but if you if you look down there, it's, it's Hasbro. Um, I don't know. I think Tomy might be their... Takara might be the original company, so they're giving them... Um, their own little thing up there, but Hasbro's the, I don't want to call them dirt bags yet, but they're heading towards it quickly, um, putting out the, uh, figures right now and charging everybody an arm and a leg, so, let's see, Transformers, the movie, remember guys, if you don't put in the movie, it's not really what you're looking for. And unfortunately, just my luck, I'm updating everything. So um, my thing will not bring it up. It must be updating Google right now. So goody for me. Good thing I have the phone. I have the phone. I have the other phone that I'm not currently using. And if it's updating itself, it's going to suck. Transformers the movie. Right, the Transformers, the movie is a 1986 movie directed uh, by Nelson Shin, starring Peter Cullen. Orson you guys heard the lady, 1986, holy crap, I can't believe I was, I can't believe I was seven, wow. Um, but, you know, I was old enough to understand Transformers, so it didn't really make a difference. So, Exosuit, Spite with Quickie, if you guys remember a couple days slash week or so ago, we did ones based upon the Dinobots, and we're also from in the movie now one of them had daniel witwicky and it looked just about like this except not quite as much detail work as far as the face and stuff goes that i believe i didn't i mean it just didn't seem like they did much it seems like they just shoved a little figure in there and maybe it was the original mold for this but this was spike witwicky and i said i need to get that now the box got a little damaged up but the good news is i'm not gonna give it away for value it's just going to be part of the collection because i like having all these transformer movie series figures now guys that were from when i grew up now i haven't collected all of them i've been sticking exclusively so far to the dinobots and um anything that um was kind of like uh part of a scene so there was the um 
And frankly, if they had put him with Bumblebee, which is what happened, guys. Uh, Spike Wickwicky was on uh, one of the moon bases with Bumblebee, where they were they were located as part of a base for checking on Decepticon activity. And of course, if everybody remembers the movie, and if you've never seen the movie, spoiler alerts. But if you've never seen the movie, what the heck is wrong with you? Um, the thing is, is that it gets it's I think one of the first things. Uh, it, no, it might not be the first thing. It was actually a different one way at the beginning. Another planet inhabited with sentient robots that gets attacked first. But it's the first place, I think, in the Transformers, quote-unquote, empire that actually gets sucked in by Unicron. So they survive, because you, because the, just in case nobody's ever heard, the idea behind Transformers of the movie was to simply eliminate Transformers that their toys were getting bumped off. Because, folks, nobody's realized Transformers, the cartoon show, was meant to sell toys. That's what it was meant for. It was meant to entertain, but it was also meant to mostly sell toys. So when the toys went bye-bye, um, they eliminated them in the movie because it was a good way to eliminate them in such a large swath. Now, in the in the comic book, they brought in um, this thing called the Underbase and did this thing for their 50th um, issue where Starscream got these superpowers and he like killed off everybody systematically. And that's how they took care of it in that. But in the TV slash movie franchise, they took care of it by um, going in there and just wiping out everybody. Megatron wiped out a bunch of people. Then there was a bunch of Transformers eliminated at the... Uh, there was some on the spaceship... They, like the the Ark, I think, or some kind of spaceship. I don't know if this actually was the Ark. Um, on the way to Autobot City in the movie, which I'm sorry looked a lot like Metroplex, but they never quite went there. Um, and the thing is, is that then there was the um, Transformers that were wiped out that did not survive from Unicron attacks. But Spike Quick Quicky, he was still a main player in the Transformers, and. They definitely could not eliminate Bumblebee. Because as you can see, Bumblebee's been going on for the years. He's just decade after decade. You can't eliminate Bumblebee. They have done things where they've kind of eliminated him. And then brought him back as a different character. But essentially, he always comes back. So they couldn't get rid of him, guys. They, so they survive. And they have to be rescued. And then, of course, they introduced a lot of new Transformers in this. That then went on to be the last season of the Transformers. Um, where they... Uh, did a lot of the stuff that was in the future, which would nowadays for us probably still look like the past because we've now, I think, gone past the point in the Transformers universe where I think it was like the year 2005 and stuff like that. They always talk about the year 2020. And it's like, guess what? I'm pretty sure that every date they ever spit out in a Transformers thing, we probably surpassed it by now. But I could be wrong. I'm not up to my Transformer uh, episodes that much. You'd want to go to hardcore fans. I'm more of just a advanced fan. Because um, here I am buying $11 figures, guys, from a movie that came out back when I was seven. So let's just say that I definitely surpassed more of the novice fan. But Spike Wick Wiki, guys, was definitely one of your few human characters that just survived the entire gambit of the Transformers franchise. And the fact of the matter is, is that when we flip him around, guys, now that we've got a good look at what he looks like here, and then we reposition you guys so you can see, this is what the exosuits always could convert into. Now, anybody that's watched the movie knows Daniels converted into something pretty similar. I'm not sure if it's exactly like that, but that's what um, Daniel makes reference while in the movie and says, oh, dad's old exosuit, because that's what they give him as he is, um, because they used a ship that looked a lot, all the ships in the dang movie look pretty much like the Ark. I'm sorry, but it's the truth. Uh, maybe they weren't as big, but that's what they always look like. So when they took off in this ship and they were taking off from Autobot City after what happened to Optimus Prime, they are taking off they find that they have major problems because they got hit lots of times on the ship on their escape so they land on the planet junkion and, he, and daniel has to be able to go out and 
they made a reference to, oh yeah, dad's old exosuit. So this was basically his new suit and what Daniel wears in the movie essentially is his old exosuit. So there might have been some slight differences in what actually happened with, um, um, with what they look like. I wouldn't be surprised. Though I do not believe they ever showed Spike's transform, but I don't know. I never actually remember enough of watching. I did watch a lot of the last season or seasons. I think there was only one. I think it was like a, I don't want to say it was season three, but I can't remember how they actually played out the seasons, guys. I think it was. I think it was listed as season three. I have the, um, I have the whole collection on DVD. And I believe when they when they went past the movie and they went into the Galvatron era, basically, I thought it was listed as season three, but I could be wrong. Um, but I don't remember if he always had the suit. I don't remember if Daniel always had the suit. The jumpsuits they have on before they actually had to put the suits on, um, pretty stylish looking. The um, thing is, is that I don't think you ever really saw Spike outside his suit, except if you maybe look close at the end scene when... Um, they're doing the all are one though i think they're on cybertron so if any of the humans were there during that time dang they would have to be in suits you got to remember guys with the original transformer stuff we don't have what we have nowadays where we have stuff like um armada and cybertron and all these things where these people somehow always have human outposts on all these places and never need a uh, not Never, I guess, but 95% of the time don't need suits for anything other than what it makes them look like. Um, they just somehow manage to find a way to always breathe uh, when no matter where they are. It's, it's just a matter. It's, it's, and it's not like Star Trek, because if you guys ever noticed on Star Trek, every place they went, unless the air was toxic, they could just breathe everywhere. Convenient. Um, and I think that's what it was for the, this show, too, guys, is it was something we didn't want to go into the uh, specifics. Now, the irony is, guys, if you look at something like Ninja Turtles, the last Ninja Turtles from 2013, I think it was, when the Ninja Turtles went to Dimension X, they immediately knew that they had to have these air breathers because the air was toxic. And that's why when the humans were brought there during one of the episodes, they had to be mutated to something that was equivalent to a life form in the actual Tr Krang's dimension. But if you look at the cartoon from back in the 80s and 90s, I I want to say, yeah, I want to say it started in the 80s and crossed over the 90s, but whatever the case is. Let's, let's go with 80s. I forget when the original Ninja Turtles started. I want to say it was right up there with transformers where it was the late it was the late 80s thing but pardon me guys if i have my time periods incorrect i i apologize for that um the thing is is that they would hop into hop hop back and forth between dimensions all the time breathing isn't an issue so it depends on your series because i believe that basically with transformers as we went along nobody wanted to explain that hey you can just kind of stroll around cybertron with no need to worry about anything considering that it was a planet for mostly um uh robots so breathing wasn't exactly an issue but in the movie that was back before we really have what we have nowadays we are talking about Twenty seven years? Twenty seven. Yes. Okay. We're in two thousand twenty three, and then you add four years, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, twenty seven years, guys. So since the movie, um, so the thing is, is that that means that um, back then, I don't think the writers were too concerned about a few details. So they were just like, well, let's slap them in spacesuits. It looks more futuristic. It looks more like robots. They have the ability to transform now, which. I'm not even going to ask how the heck that thing transformed and didn't like turn his arms into pretzels, but yeah, it is what it is. Later on, guys, during the comic books and even some of the TV series, we had headmasters where for them to convert into the heads of these robots, they had to be biomechanically um, uh, upgraded, which means I think basically all the bones were replaced with uh, uh, basically a um, metal framework. Um, they looked pretty, uh, cool in the suits that they would wear when they were humans, 
but when they converted over and they definitely look like robot heads um i believe there were times when they actually did stuff in the later comics and stuff where um some of the headmaster guys could actually get out of those suits so it's like well that's odd because you would have thought that would that was basically a permanent thing um where you would have always had to wear that to be able to become the head of your robot partner and i think it was one of those things that once again it started as one thing and then moved on to being something else entirely where it was like well we at first are going to start with these guys are going to be biomechanically transformed so that they can become robot heads and then still turn back into human beings when they're done. Now, I'm sure with all the sci-fi stuff we've come up with nowadays, we can find a much better way of doing it. But back in the day, that's what they had to work with. And then I think as things progressed, they said, hey, we want these guys to be able to blend back in so they can hide what's going on before they... So basically what you would have was you'd have like a, um, an evil... Um, you have an evil uh, headmaster like somebody that was a Decepticon headmaster, and they would be able to walk around without wearing the full suit. And usually what you, I think if I remember correctly, what they would have to do is they would have to redon the suit later on before they could become the head of that Decepticon again. But they could take the suit off. The What basically would look like a, a different version of this thing almost, this, this suit here. And they could take the dang thing off come go willy-nilly you almost thought though when you first looked at it it's like oh these guys are gonna have to wear these heavy suits for for all time but nope it was just weird it was like they said well the metal that makes up the guy's head now is going to become this suit but i think it really comes down to what i said earlier guys is about the series was meant to sell toys and that means that basically what you did was you made a character in the um, toy line, and then said, okay, we'll make this guy a cartoon character too, and we'll make him look like he does in the toy line, and we'll figure out a way to make it all work. So they would take that little tiny, tiny, tiny figure that would be like, they would be much smaller than Spike here, guys, much smaller, and basically about part of this size almost. And they would say, hey, we'll look him over, and we'll figure out a way to make him in the cartoon and in the comic book so that it matches what the toy is, or vice versa. There was a couple times where the things pop, where characters popped up in the cartoon and then went to toy line later on. It it was a weird situation, but it was whatever made money for them. That's all they cared about, guys. So, um, but yeah, going back to the figure that we're looking at in front of us, guys, because I didn't want to make this a super short video on this is just the way the figure looks, the figure looks, the figure, you know, it's like... I wanted to do something a little bit more, guys. And look at that, though. That's just great art for that. Um, and it's just close up, guys. Um, core class. That's what they call these guys. Okay. If he could convert to something else that you could put into another um, character, that'd be awesome. What's really funny, guys, is later on, I believe the, the character of Spike Wick Wiki, Wick Wiki had a brother named Buster Wick Wiki. And if I remember correctly, he became the um, character that became the head for the headmaster. Um, oh, gosh. I had it in my head for like two sections. Fortress Maximus. That's what it was. Fortress Maximus. And there was a long-running thing about him being the headmaster for Fortress Maximus uh, later on in the, car in the comic book series when he got older. There was a whole thing about how he um, hated robots, if I remember correctly. That's the way it went. And then he had to have all his, um, all these things taken out of him. Or I can't remember if it was that or he became... Yeah, it was weird. They did some weird things with the characters as they evolved the movie years. I don't actually remember what the final fate of Spike Wick Wiki was, though. I don't remember if they continued on with the character and then just tweaked him up during stuff. But he was the one of the few human allies for most of the Transformers series. And it was only later on in life when they made the Transformers cartoons and some, well, not so much the cartoons, but at least the comic books a little more hardcore that they did, they changed up and brought them back and did other things instead. Um, I will tell you guys that human allies have been a constant in the Transformers series for pretty much um, the entire run. And it really became uh, something interesting to me when they did it in Transformers Prime. 
but yet they've had human allies that did more, uh, that uh, didn't so much combine, but worked closely with Transformers, um, that did all kinds of things. You had Kicker. And uh, the Transformers, I think it was Armada series. It, it might have been one of the actual later series, like Energon, possibly. Uh, I think it might have been actually Energon, where he was the only one that carried um, the Star Saber, or through the most of the time he carried the Star Saber, which were these three Minicons that could combine together in its ultimate Saber. Um, then, of course, you have, um, I think back in actual Marta, you, Armada, you had characters that would just have their own Minicon partners, and they could ride them, you know, skateboard on them, ride them as bikes, etc., etc. You have that in the later series, guys, that they're doing right now with the Transformers um, Earthspark, where these new Autobots um, that are coming for, like, a training academy on Earth, the human allies can ride them basically as almost like hoverboards and other devices. And the thing is, is that that's the way it's worked, guys. Human allies have always been a pretty much a part of the series. Um, there are rare exceptions like Beast Wars. Anything that basically was the Beast Wars, Beast Machines, you didn't really have that. Um, but for the most of the Transformers, the fundamental ones that didn't have too much of the spinoff, um, yeah. Yeah. You almost always, if you look in, into the Netflix series, um, where they did the Transformers Netflix series, it was almost exclusively the Transformers. And that's what made those series different, besides the horrible, horrible voice acting, um, was that it was, there really was no humans involved. It wasn't on, even when they went to Earth, it was, hi, we're going to go back in time so that, guess what? No humans around, for the most part. So... You know what, guys? When they do it in the more modern age or they do anything that's within the last decade or two, it typically has to do with um, human partners and Transformers together doing something. Uh, and sometimes the humans being pretty essential to make things work. So, and that, that's a good thing that Transformers always does, guys. Just to finish off this video, I want to say that that's one of the pivotal things that I have been impressed with on Transformers over the years is that they always tend to do this thing where it's like, hey, you got these big, huge robots, but they sometimes can get out of the little, tough little problems. If you're looking at the one of the more recent ones, look at Robots in Disguise, folks, that, which is the more recent version. There was two of them. Um, human allies. They had two human allies while they were staying in their junkyard, uh, Danny, Clay, and Russell. It, without them, sometimes they would have been screwed for their covert operations. If nothing else, not really having a good place to stay. And the thing is that, you know what, guys? Human allies like this, this is where it all started, but they've been uh, sometimes crucial to the actual series going forward. So it's been a very interesting thing what they do, introducing characters that they probably sometimes didn't always have to. But I wanted this for my collection, guys, because you know I've been collecting some of the ones that are from Transformers the movie. Now, like I said, I don't have all of them because a lot of them, I'm sorry, but they're just ways of selling you the same character with different packaging. So I didn't buy some of the RCs and the hot rods and all this stuff, guys, because I already have those. But these ones, this is the first. If I'm not mistaken, this is the first for this character. So I'm very excited to add this to my collection. It'll go up on my wall. And you guys have already seen the wall that I have in the other room. And do be aware, guys, as we end this video today, um, that I will be trying in the next 24 hours to start digging through stuff. And we're going to start doing those vintage toys, guys. But this is just a kickoff to all that. I wanted to put out at least one video today. And I just picked this up last night. One one, just one of these, which I had to take one that was damaged. Only one showed up at my local Walmart. I'm not kidding, guys. One. I talked to the people there. One freaking thing of these. So, unfortunately, somebody tried to hide him, and wherever they hid him, he got beaten up. But he did get back to the shelf, somebody told me. So, the thing is, I was able to go pick it up um, last night, and that worked out really, really well. But, in the meantime, guys, I hope you like this uh, video of this exclusive Spike character that, but like I said, 
Never was put out, to my knowledge, unless somebody would like to show me a picture otherwise. At least not here, I think, in America. I don't believe it was ever put out until now in this studio series. So I'm very happy to add this to my collection. And um, I do want to show you guys some definitely older Transformer stuff, but just bear with me. Um, in the meantime, guys, uh, likes and subscriptions are always appreciated. But when it says, when I, when I talk about subscriptions, what I really want to say is thank you guys. For over 200 subscriptions that is a big big deal to me i really appreciate it it almost is bigger deal than when we get to 100 and we will definitely make it up to you guys and we'll um we'll we'll just we'll do a whole thing basically to make up for all the difference guys and i do want to do some future things to make these videos better but uh eh, we'll just have to wait and see but i hope you guys liked a little bit of the the back uh, backstory, a little bit more information on this, guys, because it w could have been just a quick, you know, here's this, here's this, here's this, okay, let's all go eat, but um, I wanted to definitely make this video worthwhile, guys, because it might be the only video I make today, we'll have to wait and see, but in the meantime, guys, have a great afternoon, and as always, guys, you've heard me saying it lately, and I'm going to say it quite often, I'm going to actually start adding my God spin moments back to the end of my videos, too, in, a, in the future, but for the most part, guys, I want to do the same thing that I've been saying lately. Go out and do some heroing today, guys. Uh, which means go out and be a hero by helping somebody, guys, do just something. It doesn't have to be anything super heroing. It just has to be something that goes out and helps your fellow man, guys. Because trust me, I believe anybody that helps out somebody else is blessed in return. I don't believe God lets that go away uh, void. I don't believe that he just says, eh, you're supposed to help people. Now get back to work, servant. No, no, no. I believe that basically by doing something good to help somebody else out, you will be blessed in return. So you guys are going to hear me say that very often going forward. Go out and do some heroing today, guys. So I hope that you guys are going to be a hero to somebody today. Hey, the Transformers were in a sense a hero to me. So I hope that you guys are going to go out and be a hero to somebody today. Be happy, be safe, guys, and we'll catch you next time.